And we are back. Thanks guys for sticking around. We'll get the Hearthstone.fi Monday Night Community Tournament number 37, semi-final number 2, going in just a second. While I tell the players to start playing, would you be so kind as to announce the classes? Well, uh, uh, Beyond has actually bring a Paladin, Warrior and Hunter, and Shaker has exactly the same lineup. So Paladin, Warrior, Hunter on both sides. Do you think we're gonna see uh, the aggro Paladin from both players? Because at least last weekend pretty much everybody brought aggro Paladin except one control and one mid-range, I think. I think there was two mid-range Paladins oh, two. All right. and one uh, like... I don't know if it was like really, really control Paladin, but like slower version of uh, the mid range, it, it had control aspects, but I, I think at the moment, like last two days, what I have been playing ladder, uh, there is just uh, hunt like aggro paladin everywhere. There is just every second matchup is against aggro paladin. So I think that's that's the popular deck at the moment, and I think the both players will be doing that. Yep, well, we'll see later on in the series of the games. Uh, Shaker decides to start it up with a Demon Zoo, while Beyond goes with his Hunter pick. There's not much to say about this match, really. It really depends on who gets the better draws. It's obviously a full-on face Hunter, with Leroy Jenkins as well added, while Shaker if uh, he's able to stabilize the board with his minions, deny the face hunter the value from the minions, could overturn the aggression and start taking the game. Do you think there's any major differences to who's favored in this a sort of a starting hand situation? Well, Beyond's hand is... It's decent, but uh, uh, like abusive certain, if that would be a leper gnome, I, I would actually uh, favor his side. But I think this matchup is overall uh, a little bit handlock sided. No, 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 Zulok sided because Zulok is running taunts quite a lot. So, well, two, but you can make four taunts, and usually those win the game for. Uh, Zulok side. Uh, of course, Voidwalker. Voidwalker being one of those early game taunts, plus Defender Fargus, mm -hmm. making sure your guys on the board get value. Deciding oh, yeah. to go for, yeah. for the Haunted Creeper instead of his Knife Juggler doesn't want to sacrifice his Knife Juggler unnecessarily. The Mad Scientist from Beyond will more than likely attack into the 3 2 Imp, and after that, you're facing down either a Freezing Crab or maybe a Snake or Explosive. And for all those situations, the Hunter Creeper is better. Well, we are going to face hard. Now, I actually think like uh, you want to play that Hunter Creeper just so you can pop it and just use it for knife jugglers. And now, when you have a Mortal Coil, call, you actually can, with decent jugglers, just clear the whole board. Yep. Uh, it's interesting enough that even without the Mortal Coil, this turn would have been very strong without popping. The Hunter Creeper, uh, oh, with popping the Hunter Creeper. But now that the Mortal Coil joined, even if those juggles don't hit the t intended targets, it'll still be uh, uh, very, very likely that at least uh, one or two of those minions will get removed. Yeah. And it was decent. Now oh, you can choose which one you take, and of course, you want to leave that mad sign, so he have to trade it in. Sadly, you will be losing your uh, knife juggler, but and something else because there is also a weapon. But you are still left with uh, spectral spiders. It's gonna be an explosive trap. Let me see. Yep, it's an explosive yeah. trap. This means it's just gonna go full face. Me no trade. Um, there's <sighs> still even if he defender Farguses, even if he defenders, he's gonna only have a one hit point flame imp left. Uh, and a one hit point Defender of Argus as well. Do you think if you don't play the Defender of Argus, you're gonna lose the board completely, have to replay it by going in Gang Boss Abusive Sergeant, which would do nothing at that situation. It, I think you're forced to kind of play the Defender of Argus, although one yeah. of those targets dies off. 
Yeah. It, it's so many if you, you would have five mana, you could go just knife juggler in gang boss, uh, or just in imp gang boss and tap to get more resources for the next turn. But you need some kind of board resistance because that that uh, four one pawn will be actually quite nice because it will still force him to most likely use him either uh, uh, unleash the hounds for two targets, so that's not that bad, or attack with a bow. Or, or use, use, use silence. Okay. In this case, it will be a silence since there are very limited options to be on. If the 2 1 L were to survive, the kill commands would be very close to lethal for next turn since he's holding on to 5 on the board, plus 5 from the hand, it would be 1 off, uh, plus whatever possibilities that come from the deck are. I don't think it's gonna live that long though. Oh. I, I think I have a bug. Um, feel free to go up and reset. The thing with this matchup is like you suggested that a tap could be an option here. And I seriously think that each and every tap versus a face hunter is such a big deal that you can't really afford to make more than maybe one or two. Since you're dra draining out your precious life total and uh, the hunter player will use each and every possible situation to push for face damage and not trade if he's absolutely not forced to. Yeah, but yeah, you had just so awkward uh, mana cross in your hand that you. Oh wow! Oh wow! Unleash the hounds top deck. I think I think that's still one damage off lethal. Is it? If he had one more mana, it would be lethal. Because Leroy is. Six, but that's not enough with the weapon. Unleash is five with the hero power. Five, seven, three, ten. Yeah. And you're facing down lethal from the board. So he's forced to trade. Uh, I would actually trade everything except the direwolf. Kill off everything except the direwolf. And then use the weapon to go for face. Because the direwolf has the smallest attack potential. It doesn't really do much. As a Zulu Warlock, you don't really care. And now you're, uh, if you use the weapon uh, to the face, then you are looking at a turn number six. Quickly. Um, yeah, you could in theory. Well, you, you can use the Leroy, uh, go face, and then use Leroy to finish off. So yeah, you, you want to play like this. Yes, yes. I was, exactly. I was, I was thinking that like, there's any kind of other situation you might get more value but that was simply the best play. Yep. Um, he's forced to tap. If he does not tap then he's dead. But does Shaker realize that? Of course the players here being Shaker from Russia and PSG's uh, Beyond uh, who is a German player making it all the way to the second semi-final uh, and Shaker does not realize that the six uh, hit points is just too low against the face hunter. Of course, it's always a risk to take to do the tap. Do the tap, and what it, what you could have gotten out of there was maybe a single defensive Argus, which would have only stopped a charging minion. So taking the risk that he hasn't, doesn't have a charger was understandable. This time yeah. didn't pay off though, so. <laughs> Yeah, and Leroy haven't been seen that much anymore, so it's interesting. Now, now that he's coming a little bit more back because the burst potential is so nice, but it's still 6 drop, and I have been seeing a lot of more decks what doesn't run Leroy than actually face hunter, but runs Leroy. Uh, 5 drop, 5 mana. Uh, 5 drop, yeah. Still. yeah. It is quite a lot of mana for only 6. Uh, face damage. I think it's one of those optional legendaries. Like you can build a face deck with or without Leroy. It doesn't really make such a big difference, but it is a tool that allows you to end games earlier. So, however you prefer to take the situation, you either include it or you don't. Um, I like it this time. It paid off for beyond nicely. Yeah, they, we have seen the X what haven't played those, uh, like have, have played all the charges what they can, basically Wolf Riders, then Arcane Columns and Leroy. Some of them has been cutting down the 
a wolf rider, like I one wolf rider to get that Leroy in, and then we just have Leroy less um, spec. So it's interesting to see like what people prefer. I, I think in like in this kind of tournament settings, Leroy is really nice because that's just maximum potential for your first. True, true. Um, Paladin Mirror, and we're seeing Sludge Belcher from beyond. Shaker could still be aggro, could still be uh, mid-range as well. The Consecration is a card that you don't always see in Paladin aggro, but it is one of those tech cards you can take to swing the mirrors and the other aggressive matches in your favor. Mm. If he takes the series, if Beyond takes the series to 2 all at this stage, he's only got his Warrior left. And that could either be Patrons or Control. I think that, or was it was it Double Warlock? I think I wrote down Warrior here for Beyond. Yeah, Warrior, both. Okay, uh. yeah. Shaker, Shaker had a Warlock instead of a Warrior, we just saw the Warlock there. So... Oh yeah, okay. there was a small mistake on that point, but let's not let that hinder us. That muster for battle with the knife juggler, though. Not perfect, but good enough for you to be able to finish it off with the last justice. And yeah, that's good. Basically, forcing out the coin consecrate. Yeah. It's. Yeah, you, you have to do it because in next turn you you have decent day. If you top the knife jumper, you can go uh, knife jumper master yourself. Uh, basically, you want to get. I don't know, Choppy Chow is. I don't like it. It's like kind of huge, but if you don't get it in first turn or, or second turn, it's actually quite a like awkward card to play. Well, this is turn number four, and it is going to get comboed with a monster for battle. The zombie chow contests the knife juggler, so I understand why it's a good play in this uh, particular board state. Mm. Um, you could just go for true silver champ and remove the knife juggler as well. Uh, you're facing mid range versus mid range. If, at least I think it's mid range versus mid range. The zombie chow could also signal that this is indeed. The control version of Paladin. Uh, there's been there's one silence. There's Tyrion. Yeah, it's it's at least slow version of like mid range, but I think this this will be a control like full control Pali. Yep. Because it, yeah, yeah. Beyond also has. Lay on hands in his hand, which signals yeah. a more controlly version. So it's control paladin versus control paladin, and oh boy, that's gonna take a while. <laughs> yeah. Interesting to see that there is control paladins running everywhere because mm. it's not that like popular deck at the moment, and I, I think it has quite bad matchups also. Like, but it has really like decent matchups quite a lot, but it also has few matchups, but just feel so clunky and annoying to play against. I have to agree with you there. Uh, what I don't agree with is using this owl on the taunt. Although Shaker doesn't have an immediate response to the board state, I think it would have been better to drop down the true silver champion as an alternative and use a zombie child to clear the 3-5 out. Yeah, you don't get to use all your lights just as charges, but that owl Unless you run two and you really expect to get one in two turns, it needs to be there for turn eight, because Tyrion is one of those key cards that make or break this matchup. Okay, basic clearing. Yeah. Nothing much going on. Those trades make the most sense, so you go ahead and you execute it. No peacekeeper targets. No real reason to play the true silver, so he just opts to not play it in case the opposing player has a Harrison. Uh, yeah. Before face damage right now doesn't doesn't really matter. Yeah, you don't want to use your uh, true silver for mm. face damage. I think in this match because there's so much more, so much heal that you most like likely want to use that true silver just to get that board board present. 
it's good against the Shredders. It's good against any smaller three hit point minion. Yeah. Um, a trading two for one. Control and con control versus control matchup. Mm. That is one of the most key points you can do. Six mana Shredder hero power or hero power into Defender of Argus and value trade the two two into the one one. That could be an option. Uh, you could go for the true silver to clear into three three and then just hero power. Uh, definitely though, Aldor is the weakest option here. Yeah, I like Shredder kind of because that still leaves you decent presence on the board. I, I think two one ones. Oh, you got, yeah. It, it, it doesn't like if you just leave the Belcher over there, you still will have three guys uh, on the board after trades. What is like visual, and then you have to use cards to actually get stuff out. Of course, this other peacekeeper will be really, really annoying because it drops the da hell, uh, damage for one. But oh, yeah, I was about to say the same thing that Paladins have so many options that make it so that this Belcher will get a good value trade. And I don't like the uh, Shredder uh, in this situation over the Defender or the True Silver. Um, let's say he does that mirror play and uh, makes sure that the Shredder does nothing right now. Yeah, I, then, I think just arguing and now you can trade really yeah. nicely. Yeah. This uh, is a good situation to be in. It is a bit vulnerable to Consecration, but not a whole lot. If he, if Beyond trades his Shredder into Shaker's Shredder, he's gonna get the two drop, and then if he had the Consecration to go with it, he could also trade the Peacekeepers. There would still be a 2-1 Defender left on the board though, so... I think leaving 2-1 over there, just dropping Boo, like see what, what drops from the Shredder on your side. Just trade 4-4, four, four, drop Boo, and... Well, because you, you, like, if you would have Consecration, it would be so easy, just equal, like, Consecration, then just clear the board, but, like, if you go True Silver here, you most likely won't have board after, after next turn. Well, with the True Silver, you do guarantee exact damage to a minion. That was one of those things we talked about earlier. That you get yeah. value, you get the exact amount of damage to swing the match in your favor, and now the 3 3 gets to do a value trading. Go to so it's not a bad play. It's definitely opening up the board more in your favor, and although it's not as effective mana wise, it does provide more immediate uh, relief yeah. for you. Um, what could Shake your draw into to handle those big legendaries. He's gonna play his own Tyrion. I uh, hope that the opposing player doesn't have it. an owl or any other mechanic that deals with it. Even a black knight. Uh, you know what? In this matchup, I think a black knight would be the most key card to have. Yeah, it would be total all stars. Uh, there's so many tar targets. The Sludge Belch, the Tyrion the targets from the Argus. Yeah. You that was actually a really nice drop from the like three two from uh Pilot Shredder is like something you really want. Like now you have so much damage in the board the opponent have to have some kind of answer but sadly he has actually quite nice answers he has B BDH Let and Slush Belcher and then you can deal with the board. Despite chat, no, I am not Walter White. I don't deal drugs. <laughs> Thanks for uh, <laughs> reminding that I look like a famous Hollywood personality, though. It's always nice to hear it. Um, yeah, I think that against this board, though, the 3-2, three, 3-2 two, three, two wasn't as great because of the value trade that the 2-2 two, two gets, if he wants it. If, if it would have been a 2-3, then the situation would have been more easy for uh, Shaker to... Uh, or, uh, sorry, for... Uh, beyond since that value trade from shaker would not be a possibility yeah mm. <laughs> shaker even deciding to go and go ahead and play the true silver champion despite there being a Tyrion on the board and a very real possibility that the true silver champion will just be overwritten mm. but he gets one hit in you get you get a heal uh, basically you didn't have mana to play 
that exact thing plus Belcher, so I think that was a decent play. Now that like, the opponent is in level, you can basically have uh, lethal in your weapon, so there must be something done for that. So I think that's a decent good. Yep. This Tyrion, however, in the other side will be quite annoying. <laughs> like I was saying as well, uh, he hoped to be able to push for the more aggressive line of play, but of course yeah. we can see that Beyond was easily able to deal with the board, not having the SSE quality before that situation, making sure that all those 1-1s one get absolutely great trades. And that Kazan Mystic is going to be a dead card in this matchup. No Paladin Secrets get played currently. The Doctor Boom, in theory, contests the board the best. Um, but the 6-6 six, six is just gonna go right over its head, into the face, force as much damage as possible. Despite having the big game hunter, Shaker was unable to wrestle control uh, with that swing, swing play, and it's looking more and more like Beyond will be able to crawl back, or not even crawl, just walk back out of this valley of darkness, so to speak. Well, I think it still has like if he like he doesn't know the hand like he can go for hair merry merry play and just try to push through that uh Tyrion and try to force damage in but the sad thing is that there is like uh what, 30, 13 points of healing on the hand so that's way too much if you extend over here and just push it in and try to get as much damage as you can it will just like fire even with two belchers, it's... Uh. And it, it's a uh, 16. Lay on hands is 8. Antique is 8. So half your oh, yeah, whole uh, hit point pool will be just replenished in two turns. Beyond is in no spot of trouble right now. Got him getting a nice juggle though. If he gets... Let's see. If he attacks the 6-6 six, six with his own weapon, can he face tank it? Is that too big of a risk? Because that's the only way you can clear out that Tyrion on this turn, unless you, you, you rely must. on the juggle. I, I think you have to face tank it. Yep. Now you have Belcher, so it's, it's not that bad. But... If he had only if he only had one Belcher, it would be pretty bad. But since yeah. he's got two, it's okay. Uh, now the fullbot could hit face and be lethal, and the target this time was the wrong one though. That four damage would have been enough, but not quite the real target. That cock hammer wouldn't be like totally useless card now. You could just give the taunt and that shield, but you don't want to override that Ashbringer, so it would be quite dead. Glad no he got two points of crazy. That's actually Rina's and a Harrison Jones, so that Ashbringer will be denied on Shaker's side. Yep, I think. That's guaranteed lethal because, yep, that's guaranteed lethal. Double Consecration next yeah. turn. And uh, there's no way for Shaker to draw cards or heal himself up. That is true. <laughs> this he, is... he did have a pro like, Beyond has really nice cards and he found the right answers. Even when his board was contested quite hardly, when you got all of your legendaries in your hand, it's Quite easy to recover from bigger blows. Reporting for duty. Uh, yeah, I have to hand it to Beyond. He played it very well. He played it calm. He didn't make any rash decisions. Yeah. He took his time playing the turns. Well, he could have taken more time, of course, but we thank him for not taking too long. Uh, must move quickly. And uh, what do you think about the tech cards and the decisions the that you include into down. this version of Paladin? I think Beyond's deck uh, got a slightly better draw uh, for the situation. Well, uh, I, I like that Harrison Jones uh, tech in in that deck because the one thing what is really annoying for Paladins is uh, like really good weapons. You don't see anymore like Gore House, but something like that was really awesome. Or like against more aggressive like Hunters, getting that eagle horn ball away it's it's so good for your like sustained so 
I, I like it better than Kesam Mystic. Like, because Kesam Mystic you can kind of deal because you have your hero power. If it's an uh, explosive trap, it's, it's annoying, but still. I will fight with honor. I don't think that's too bad. Yep. But we're but next. We see in, in the weekend, like, I have to say that we, we saw a lot of uh, acidic ooze. Like we, I think it's like six or seven decks at least run that one. I I like that a lot. Oh, lots of weapon hate. That's definitely true. Many many players decking their techs versus weapons, and that's a control warrior. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> They're running control paladin and control warrior and making it this high in a tournament. Well, De definitely not my expectation. Double control is very difficult to make it through in the best of three series bracket. I didn't notice the. Uh, Mulligans, like what was over there, but Alex Trasa was one of the cards uh, in what was like thought about the uh, patron, like what it could do better, like in endgame to add one. Like some play crumbs, uh, crumbs, yeah, the crumbs, but some say that Alex Trasa could also could be a really nice card for in that deck. Oh uh, well, the cruel taskmaster uh, can be combined with. Alex and Acolyte plus Deaths. This would traditionally be considered a full-on control, but yeah, it's it's not it's not impossible. Okay, oh shield slam that. I think that nails it because if you go Alex Trusted and you go don't, don't go shield slam tech into Patron. Um, yeah. Mm, utilizing the weapon, redoing the weapon. Oh, not even redoing it. Just wait, uh, sort of wasting two mana here. I guess he doesn't care. Yeah, he doesn't care, care about the immediate effect because this control versus control matchup once again turns to the value game. And if you don't show your dead spite early on, oh, up you play the top decked version just to play mind games with Shaker. That's well done on Beyond's part. And I think actually chess slamming here is is good play because you most likely won't have too much armor in this matchup because Paladin can always push some amount of damage, so I, I like to play a lot. Getting that value all of, out in this early is it's it's good. It is very good. Uh, you have two options here. Either you go face with your weapon, hero power cog hammer, and try and deny the dead spite value. Or you drop the sludge belcher, keep your weapons, decide that yeah sure I can sacrifice this one five hit point minion. I, I think although it feels a bit bad to utilize the cog hammer on just a one one, it's still better to coax out the charge from the weapon onto a small value minion instead of the higher value belcher. Would you yeah. agree? Yes. Shaker decides to not. Uh, take out the Divine Shield yet, hoping that it'll get a better better target later on. Beyond's hand, pretty much perfect. He can even play that uh, cool Taskmaster with his own ankle out of pain if nothing comes up from the draw here. Or just hero power, that's always an option. I think you want to use hero power, you just want to keep your health high. If you lose board control, blah blah board presence for big like legendary, you want to have that armor pumped up as much as you can. And because this uh, true silver will be used to kill Acolyte, because you can keep three cards from the Acolyte. Yeah, that's exactly one of the reasons why I would like the like Cruel Taskmaster, because you had a minion at one hit point and it yeah. draws three cards. Yeah, the slime can trade, the slime can trade not force out the weapon charge, but it still would have meant that you could have gotten maximum amount of value out of that. Yeah. And what's the 4 damage attack going to be good against? You, you have the Belchers that are 5, you have many little minions that have more than 5 hit points as well. Well, basically only uh, good against the armor smiths. Like, e exactly good. Like, Every, anything else, it's too big or too small. Turn 7, you have Boom to play Boom. Yeah. End of story. <laughs> Beyond turn 7, going very fast. Most likely that would be answered with Dr. Boom. Well... Uh, no, no, that, that, sorry, there is a BGH. So yeah, yeah, there is a BGH in the hand, so it could be... 
It could also be an equality play. It could be a BGH play. Oh, wow. If he goes for the Dr. Boom mm -hmm. versus Dr. Boom. Mm, in theory, that could be good for you if those uh, bombs juggle into your doctor. And your doctor uh, soaks some of the damage against the opposing 7 7. No minion hits, no minion hits. Now the doctor will be safe. Yeah. Now it's gonna be inter interesting to see. Like, Beyond would most definitely use Brawl over here if that's possible, but there isn't one. So. Yeah, execute. Yeah, execute. But then, do you play like Belcher? I think you I think go for the Belcher. Yeah, Belcher can pop the Divine Shield with your boom this turn because you don't really mind the one damage. Mm. The equality does a lot of work. Yeah, and definitely lot. equality go. Like, like equality, then you still have six mana. You can still drop your pilot shredder and use hero power, and you are good to go. And now that the bomb will be used for the three one, then the weapon will be used to clear out the one two. Uh, depending on the juggles from the bombs, you will definitely clear the board. But how? Effectively, you'll have minions left on your side of the board. It's dependent on these juggles. Where does it hit? All through the face, alright? Then you just play the Shredder, Hero Power, Gold. Uh, we should trade the two one for one. Well, you shoot and you shouldn't. Like, you, you can gamble that there is nothing to hit and you can go for a face, but one damage in this matchup is nothing, so I think just it's just. Like, okay, to just trade in everything, just make it steady. I like the play, the aggressive Alexstrasza from Beyond right, right now signals to Shaker that hey, hey, I got this aggressive card, so I, I'm pushing you down next turn. Trying to force Shaker to handle the 8 8 on the board. Um, Tyrion being a nice top deck for it. Are you afraid of uh, Silence though? Mm, a little bit. Uh, I think safer plays just go for uh, big game hunter hero power uh, go like go to the face because then you have so much like you have two guys then you can go master and quartermaster or or What's just go master now right? like BDH ma master and then next turn you have these with this play you uh, are Short of little by little by two. Whoa! Oh, that's cool. Deathwing, golden Deathwing. Guys, I've never seen this one before, and it is awesome. Yeah. So you don't have to run brawl when you have that guy. But you still will run one brawl. But that's What's so much now? more cooler. I'm I'm still speechless at, about this one. It's but sad sad thing is. Even if you use this, you are going to lose the game, most likely, because you will give an Ashbringer on the other side. So it's it's really awkward. Like, you have to use a shield block to get something. And then perhaps, like, get Whirlwind, but I, I think this Dex doesn't run Whirlwind. So He's going to uh, get the Whirlwind from the Dead Spite uh, Death Rattle. Well, yeah, yeah, that, that works. Six, nine, yeah. I collect Fire and War Axe, clear out the Tyrion, go for the face with the weapon. Yep. Yeah. Very straightforward, the story writes itself. Yeah. Nefarium was something I was expecting from this, so. This, this oh, kind oh, of oh, depth, is that so. Blessing of Kings lethal? It yeah, is lethal. It is lethal, yeah. So, running a Blessing of Kings in a controlled paladin. It's neat. It works. That's exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely not a usual choice, though. Well, I, I think it's a good, like, extra card. Maybe if he's running at one, just to make those really nice trades with smaller guys. So, it's. I think it's it's really good. Like, like they used to have that uh, hammer just to make three damage, and I, I think that's. Blessing of Kings is way better than that. 
Okay, that gives you one card, but I, I think leaving a guy behind from the train is way better. Actually, hard. Yep. Uh, if you expect to be in a situation where you can play that passing insurance to buff one of your minions, then yes, it is one of the better cards. They're one of the reasons why Aggro Paladin likes the card so much, because you usually have a big board. But yeah. Control Paladin might not. It's. <laughs> Do you really want to buff a Tyrion? Because it's not prone to get silenced already. It's like, There are not that many great targets for it. But let's move on to the next matchup. No more lingering the previous one. Beyond's Control Warrior going against Shaker's Zulog. It's all about that early game, ain't it? Yeah. And Beyond has that win axe, so it doesn't look that bad of start. And, and he also has Armor Smith and Acolyte of Pain, so he has quite nuts to roll. And, and full Taskmaster just to make sure if something tries to stick over there. Knife Juggler would otherwise be an automatic play, but this Fiery War Axe is gonna. Well, let's say slow your thunder somewhat. Um, just tapping feels bad as well. I wonder. Can you afford to sacrifice the juggler? It is still three phase damage, and it is early game pressure. Yeah, it's really harsh. Like just throwing that guy to the wolves is it's it's bad, but still in the next turn you have nothing to play so you you now you have to keep like three drop and then four drop and then you are good imp gang well, boss would be pretty okay yeah but dark wolf alpha by itself does contest the armor smith over two turns so slowly you can get rid of it yeah oh hero power shield slam that would work that would definitely work speak to me nope I'm no need time. slow enough well gonna get Punished for that. Either abusive or defender of Argus will be enough to deny the card draw to be just one. Yeah, I think my seal for Argus. Taunt is better because you. Well, I don't know. Actually, yeah, I don't know. It, it's actually hard because I think getting Argus without would be beneficial for you. Because you had the def, uh, abusive surgeon, but you have nothing to follow that play. It's you are kind of forced to play this, and you will get punished by the body. So five. yeah. Uh, normally you would just drop Lothab without even thinking about it, but since you're holding onto the Nerubian, I really like dropping the Nerubian, using it with abusive and power next turn. Yeah. Or just using the power, uh, abuse of this turn and then dropping the Rubian. Yeah, you, you want to trade that armor speed away. Yep, you want to clear it out. Uh, it does mean that your board will get cleared completely by the dead spite, but no more armor means a better matchup for you. The alternative play is trip, uh, drop Voidwalker and then the Rubian egg, and still, the I, I think you end up in quite the same. Well, no, yeah, actually, he has to use one card to actually clear the whole board. Well, not whole board, but two guys, so yeah. Doesn't care about the armor. Interesting. Just dropping down the Void Walker. Not even thinking about it that much. I, why would you do that? I mean, help me understand why you only play those smaller minions. Mmm. I actually don't know. Like in that play, it gives the warrior options. Yeah. And like, I if wonder. if there is happens to be a taunt, like there was now, you, your board is just totally jammed, and and you can't play knife juggler because every juggle will hit most likely guy who has quite a lot of health, and you will just give huge amounts of armor. You have to use and hero like. Overwhelming, then abuse it for egg, pop it, then deal with the one two, and still you are in quite awkward position. Maybe yeah. maybe drop ink back gang boss that actually helps you in the next turn. So yeah. 
Yes, the knife juggler will still be played. It seems he's gonna play it after oh, yeah. the other minions are done. Yeah. Um, this rope is not gonna be a factor. Nope, no, ju no juggler. See? Yeah. I, I think I would have liked the juggler, but I guess he's afraid of a brawl. This is already quite a stacked board, and everybody knows yeah. that an armor smith wins a brawl, so. Yeah, every time. It's it's 10 out of 10. We did also try with Acolyte in weekend a few times, but that didn't work. Like only armor smith. But still, it needs, yeah, it needs, needs either execute or draw power slash. Not using, not using the executes. Um, I, I do like it. I just mainly due to the fact that Thelda's Sun is such, such a strong card. Yeah, um, but knife juggler implosion to Thelda's Sun and and the board is cleared. Yes, but you get a lot of armor far out of it. So, well, yeah, most likely you get like two or three, and that would be actually negative. But Nerubia. You could attack. You could attack the one one with the four three. Mm, Hoping for that's, a four, that's true. and you get the four. Okay, so the board will be cleared. Yeah, will be cleared. Okay, might it not will be, be cleared. Clear. Yeah, yeah. Okay, will be cleared. <laughs> Very close <laughs> to not being cleared though. Okay, yeah. now one of the executions will be played most likely. Like, yeah, really? on the 4 3. I, I what, what, no, 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 don't play the 0. Play, play the 1. Like, why? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Utilize the mana. Utilize the mana on the Or will he play a cool cash match for him? Yeah. Ah, right. Yeah. Hero power shield slam will kill the 3-2 next turn if he wants to, and if the 2-2 is not alive. But the Sylvanas might be too slow. The Execute doesn't really have any good targets, and if the Lothar comes out, then that Sylvanas is really the only option. Yeah. And I, I think it's in gang boss and low chip, because you had the board, so now you, it's really good time to actually just jam the low chip. He can't play Brawl in next turn because he's only an 8 mana. First attack so. with the Juggler to oh, yeah, he already did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First attack with the Juggler to the face, because if those bombs hit your 3-2, then that's bad luck. <laughs> Out of all the 6 options, it goes to the face. Of course. So, so, sometimes the bombs are as smart as we are, so it's nice to yeah. know. And the knife got... Didn't hit the Taskmaster, so there wasn't a trade. Yep. At least some luck for Beyond left. Um, no targets for the BGH, otherwise you would, of course, play him immediately. But Sylvanas no just got a lot games. better due to the fact that the 5-5 five five is on the board and you can trade with it. Mm. Would you use that Dr. Boom to go for face, be really, really aggressive, or take out the gang boss? Yep, going for face, because that's threatening me for next turn. Yeah. Five, seven, eight, plus five, thirteen. You're missing four. Yeah, so tap, get the over power, overwhelming. Yeah, and go. power overwhelming will be lethal. That's enough mana for it as well. Yeah. If you don't play the PO, then you use your five, five, and your one, one to trade into the doctor. If you don't use your PO, then your Doom Guard is actually pretty much a dead card. Yeah. Oh, nice. Nice. You, that's exactly what you needed for the Sylvanas. Now you can silence this mind, mind control from the Sylvanas, Doom guard her, and make the trade very efficient. And now is the question do you, do you play Ultra Aggressive and go for the face like he can't go for, he can't then... go for the aggressive play no no way he's facing down so much so much threat from the control warrior a single weapon would be lethal no, but you have seen two uh, three i think three weapons already so ah right 
Hmm. Oh, Nef, no, a two, yeah, a two, two. Yeah, Neff would otherwise be an autoplay, but the 5 2 threatens. Uh, right now it's 9 on the board, he needs 6 from the hand. That needs 2 cards. Only Leroy is 6 right now for the war Warlock. What now? Okay, so he's taking the risk there's no Leroy coming up and play the Nefarian. I like it. Uh, the Nefarian will be handled, but it requires all the things. Okay, since Demons, times 2. <laughs> wow. That's 2. So he said he needs a second abusive sergeant, and he wins. Or P.O. Okay, that, that's cruel. Wow, yeah. Like, like, what? They do nothing. At least the 8-8 eight eight on the board does something. Right now it's lethal. He's yeah. forced to utilize the abusive sergeant, and then some. Uh, two minions are going to go into the Nefarian. And just an Imp Gang boss left on the board. I wonder. Yeah, well, two Imp Gang bosses plus an Yeah, abusive. an Abusive Sensor. Yeah, it's actually... It's six damage, it's not enough to kill off the Control Warrior, and if you get something like a Shield Slam, the Control Warrior just runs off with the game. Yeah. There's no and six. Then he can, and if he doesn't top deck anything, he can play this Sense Demons just, to, just oh. for the loss. Get those worthless Imps in there. Yeah. Force the trade. Uh, it's very, very bad for the warlock, and of course, very nice for the warrior. Oh, oh wow, there's the Deathwing. You don't care about all those cards. You really don't care. I think no, you just no. slam down Deathwing and be done yeah. with it. There's not even one one spawn for those uh, Imp Gang bosses, so. Yep. Yeah. Tap into something, then get a target for Defender. Okay, yeah. is it a minion? It's, it's a minion, you can play it. Yeah. The, uh, a dire wolf elf is stopping the power incarnate Deathwing oh right in his tracks, at least for one turn. Yeah. The rage. <laughs> <nothing>. That's what worked. <laughs> uh, the Shaker still needs another top. Well, Void Walker. Void Walker would be nice. We haven't seen both yet. There would be like, not enough. It has to tap. Doomguard. Oh, man. Is it? No, not lethal. That's it. No. no. Yeah, that, that's why you play that. So you can top, top deck it after you have just bad hand and then just freeze the board. So the series goes 3-1 to uh, PSG's German player, Beyond. Finishing the game off with a Deathwing. Is that, isn't that the coolest way you can end a game ever? Yeah. Uh, no, no. Uh, well, it depends. Like, if you get really nice angry chicken, that's that. Oh, okay, okay, that's really even awesome. cooler, yeah. I, actually, I saw a deck tech about Angry Chicken uh, Hunter. I tested out, and it was really bad. But it was so I, I won one game, but uh, like it was like nine, nine seven, a uh, nine six uh, Angry Chicken. Nice, nice. Uh, we're gonna go for a short break. Get the players ready for the actual finals of this Hearthstone.fi Monday Night Community Tournament number thirty-seven. Stay with us. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.